Teresa Wright may not be a name you recognize, but she was a major force in classic Hollywood. She had a six-decade career and appeared in over 30 films, dozens of series and made-for-TV movies, and countless stage productions. She seemed unstoppable until her career started to take a downturn. Keep watching to learn more about how Teresa Wright died 20 years ago, but her career was dead before then. Early Life Muriel Teresa Wright was born October 27, 1918 in Manhattan. Her parents divorced when she was young, and she lived with relatives in New York and New Jersey. One of her uncles was an actor, but the acting bug didn't fully implant itself in her until she saw Helen Hayes perform in a production of Victoria Regina. She was so impressed, she knew she wanted to do it too. That led her to perform in school plays. After graduating from Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey, she decided to perform acting professionally. She earned a scholarship to the prestigious Warp Theater in Provincetown, Massachusetts in the summer of 1937 and 38. She appeared in various plays there, such as The Vinegar Tree and Susan and God. She changed her name to Teresa because she discovered there was already a Muriel Wright working with Actors' Equity. Her New York debut was in a production of Our Town, where she had a small role but was also the understudy for the female lead. She came on to replace Martha Scott, who went on to play the role in the film. Teresa spent a year in a production of Life with Father and was discovered by MGM talent scout Samuel Goldwyn. Teresa was young, but nobody's fool. She added several stipulations to her contract, such as not being forced to appear in several types of photos. The list included everything from holding a cocker spaniel to posing with bunny ears to running on the beach. The primary clause was to protect her against, quote, cheesecake publicity, a euphemism for opposing nude. She also wanted to be able to return to the theater at least once a year. Samuel was hesitant but believed she was talented. Early Career in 1941, Teresa beat out several other actresses for the lead in The Little Foxes. She showed off her ability to play a character who is both soft and strong, similar to her true personality. Her next roles included Mrs. Miniver and The Pride of the Yankees in 1942. She was the only performer to ever be nominated for an Oscar for her first three films. She won the Best Supporting Actress trophy. That massive start saw her career prospects shoot up. She got another major honor for an actress at the time, appearing in a Hitchcock film. She got a role in Shadow of a Doubt. She was then loaned out to an independent studio for her fifth film, 1944's Casanova Brown. After taking time off for pregnancy, she appeared in The Best Years of Our Lives in 1946. It won Best Picture and was one of the most prestigious films of her career. Feuding Teresa Wright and Samuel Goldwyn, head of MGM, hadn't gotten along since day one. He hated that she made him follow arbitrary rules, such as those stipulations to her contract about when and how she could be photographed. She didn't like the way he treated her. The disagreements eventually boiled over into a full-on feud. Teresa was set to appear in 1948's Enchagment, but refused to promote the film. She claimed she was too ill, but wouldn't let physicians look at her. No matter what, she wouldn't go to New York City like she was asked. This was the last straw for Samuel. She was already announced to appear in the 1948 adaptation of the short story Uncle Wiggily in Connecticut, but he fired her, even though there were years left on her contract. He called her uncooperative and ungrateful and hoped to discourage that type of behavior from all his stars. No. Teresa, for her part, said that she never refused to do anything she was asked. She accepted the termination of her $5,000 a week contract, claiming that his actors were treated like cattles and made to work unreasonable hours. The harsh words and hurt feelings were too difficult to come back from. She was forced to go out on her own and see if anyone else would hire her. Life and career after the contract Teresa's feud with Samuel Goldwyn affected her career in ways she never could have foreseen. The primary factor was the way it changed her image. Producers and executives didn't want to sign on an actress who was known for being uncooperative. She had a full award shelf, but her name had become less and less of a box office draw since her work in Shadow of a Doubt. The era she lived in also worked against her. Beauty and age were more of a factor then than they even are today. She was beginning to age out of the ingenue status that made her famous to begin with. 
Studios and movie theaters were also being sold, with TV becoming the screen of choice. She had to move to a new medium or risk getting left behind. That's why Teresa's career seemed to be dead before it started. She stayed away for a while until making a comeback in the 50s. This included films like Something to Live For and California Conquest, Count the Hours, Track of the Cat, and Escapade in Japan in 1957. Her screenwriter husband, Niven Bush, whom she married on May 23, 1942, got her a part in Pursued in 1947 and The Capture in 1950. They divorced in 1952. They had two children, Mary Kelly and Niven. Her next husband was Robert Anderson, who she married in 1959 and divorced in 78. The two did remain friends until her death. She also appeared in The Men in 1950 and The Intriguing Search for Bridey Murphy, two of her best post-WW2 films. The latter was her attempt to, in her own words, be Joan of Arc, but only proved she would work for less than most stars of her time. Before it aired, she earned only $65,000 for 1947's Pursuit. She still needed to put bread on the table, so she attempted to find work in other mediums. She moved on to TV, appearing in the 1955 version of The Miracle on 34th Street. She eventually found success on the small screen. Her work in the Playhouse 90 version of The Miracle Worker earned her three Emmy nominations. She also appeared in the 1989 series The Dolphin Cove. She returned to the stage in plays such as Salt of the Earth, The Heiress, and The Rainmaker. The Dark at the Top of the Stairs in 1957 was her official Broadway return. She married playwright Robert Anderson in 1959. She appeared on stage in his drama I Never Sang for My Father in 1968. They lived on a farm in New York until their divorce in 78. Her final TV role was in Picket Fences in 1996. She lived the last decade of her life in seclusion, appearing at a few film festivals and events associated with the New York Yankees. Death and Legacy Teresa Wright died of a heart attack at age 86 on March 6, 2005. She was buried at Evergreen Cemetery in New Haven. Her children and grandchildren survived her. Her daughter writes children's and young adult books. Her grandson, Jonah Smith, is a film producer. Her talent has enabled her to hold multiple records. She was the youngest actor to receive three Oscar nominations for acting until Jennifer Lawrence came along in 2014. She's also one of 12 actors to get Academy Award nominations for two acting categories in the same year with Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress nods for The Pride of the Yankees and Mrs. Miniver in 1942. Critics praised her performances from the beginning. Directors she worked with recognized her abilities. William Wyler called her the most promising actress he'd ever directed. Hitchcock admired her intelligence, warmth, and quiet professionalism. Teresa got two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on February 8, 1960. One recognizes her work in films, the other is in honor of her work in television. Now it's time to hear from you. Who's your favorite forgotten Hollywood star? Let us know in the comments section below.